Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be going back to a list that we tried before a previous patch, and that is going to be a big money Astra list. So, what we've got is we've decided to build a list with all of the most expensive units in the game. So there's no one drops, two drops, three drops, or four drops. Every single thing in our list is five plus cinder. So, looking at this, we're starting with our six drops, so we've got switchback, so obviously a really nice finisher and an astralist. We've got Makwani Thicket. Again, just fairly reasonable, a bit overcosted in my opinion, a bit ineffectual compared to the other six drops, but reasonable. And then Movian Bulwark, the actual most overcosted unit in the game, in my opinion. I genuinely wouldn't mind seeing Bulwark go down to four Cinder, and I even then don't think it would see much play. So gonna be a bit of a challenge on that front. And then otherwise we've also got the Aegis Defense Dome as well. So that's all of our six drops. Looking at five drops, we've got Crosshair, so I chose Crosshair because it's got a good bit of damage output. We've got uh, Furia, so there's a choice between Furia, Tony, Mystic Manteo, and Quetzali. So we're not the most mobile list as it is, so given that we've already got two units that can't move at all, Quetzali didn't really feel appropriate, so I went for Furia instead. Uh, we've got our Aegis Sentinel, who again I think is a better version of the turret compared to the Bulwark, and Florio Lancer for a good use of that Cinder. So, in the early game, our only purpose is going to be to place Cinder Orbs and try and survive. That's absolutely all we can do. Uh, in terms of assists, we want anything that keeps us alive as long as possible. So, this list isn't going to go well versus uh, competitive lists, but hopefully we should be able to have a lot of fun with it and see if we can just throw some games, uh, you know, throw into some games with some of the most expensive units there are. And if we can last that long, we might just have quite a lot of fun doing so. So we've picked up a game quite quickly. And let's see what kind of opponent we've got today. So we've got a Zax. That is a good start. Um, okay, so here, what do we want? Stowaway is almost utterly useless here. So that's always good to know. Cinder Infusion might help eventually with Corrosive and then Stasis and Stimburst. I think Stasis and Stimburst is what we're going to need here. Of course, as usual, we are against Jester. So I think I can hands down say that this is going to be one of the uh, the worst matchups we could possibly imagine. What we need to do is find somewhere this can be safe for a couple of turns. So I think actually maybe it's just over here. Because we don't want to use this until we've got five Cinder available. So what we could do potentially is actually bank it next turn and then hide some more Cinder for the following turn. That could also work. But uh, given that Jester plays very aggressive lists, I think it's highly unlikely that we're going to do too well here. So, what I think I'm going to do is exactly what I just mentioned. So I think I'm going to move here, take a pot shot of this, and then just, rather than risk that for a couple of seconds, just place this down and try and save it for an extra turn. Because then next turn we can play something big. So as it stands we've already got six in there, this just helps us bank some more. Maximus is going to hit us like a truck, but we have to decide what we want to place down early. If this is Disruptor, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we waste the Cinder, but we were storing it anyway. Yeah, so that doesn't really matter to us. They're going to get the hits in. Honestly, depending on what they play next, if it if Jester goes for sort of Rickety, which is their normal play, it could even be worth going for Defense Dome this turn. I get glad that missed. Second wind, and if this is rickety backfire, we probably just have to run away and go for a defense dome play. It could just be dead eye and something else. Interesting. We'll see how this goes because we're probably stim bursting and just running away here, and making them spend cinder on Quetzali. Okay, so it's Antios this time. Antios and dead eye. Interesting. Okay, so we we probably do need something that affects the board here. So. Most likely we're going to actually go for a switchback, because switchback can potentially one-shot any of these. So let's just take our shot. Let's stim blast ourselves as far away as possible. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to actually play Crosshair out. And, okay, so where can Dead I move? Okay, so it's going to be hard for them to get something deployed here. So let's just grow our Cinder about here. And we'll crosshair, we'll crosshair back here as well. Keep it nice and safe. 
So I don't think there's much way they can get onto this unless they've got Vortex as well as Disruptor. But this should be interesting. Especially having stun next turn, we can actually start you know, trying to chip out some damage here. As in, you know, stall their units, slow the game down, and get our big units up. We That hitting is slightly annoying, but it is what it is. So what we're going to be hoping to do here is, okay, depending on what they play, obviously, but we're going to look into stun something that's going to be putting pressure on us and probably even just play the defense dome here. So it could even be that we go for stunning Antios Gauntlet using Crosshair to shoot whatever else gets deployed if it's in range. Okay, this is Rickety, so we've got no chance of dealing with Rickety here. But yeah, so that's Rickety, so that's probably what we're going to have to stun. So that means what can we play next for Six Cinder that's really going to have an effect on this game state? Because they can move in here, get 8 damage off of Antios. If they've got uh, Quetzali, then Rickety can absolutely just come for us. So I think Rickety has to be the stun, because Rickety can deal more damage than almost anything else. And the question is, what do we try and damage here? So it could even be that we go for Dead Eye, but I'm not really sure what the best route is here. If we get any crit out of these two, that would be great. We didn't there. And we can't even get a good angle down here because I've placed that badly. Interesting. So maybe we just go for some damage onto Antios. I think we need to push play something defensive is the problem, but... Yeah, so I get the feeling we're going to lose a lot of life here. And given that we're not going to have... Actually, we would still have six in the next turn, wouldn't we? We spent all of this, we're in... Maybe not. I think we need to play something like switch back and just try and put pressure onto the board. Yeah, we're only going to have five next turn now. So we could have played a five drop and then saved for six, but we could also play this way around. I think there's a good chance we're just dead here. Yeah, Disruptor's going to uh, do a great job of that. Again, Jester is not the opponent we want to come against running these sort of lists. There is very little chance that Jester's playing anything other than a, a very competitive list, and we're playing as slow of a list as possible. So this is about what I expected, but I actually think we got closer than I thought. But, you know, Technically, we didn't actually kill a unit, but if we'd have just had a little bit more of delay, I'd just release those here to make sure. Yeah, there we go. Like, if we'd have had a little bit more time, we weren't too far away from being able to slow things down. I do think that it could have just been a play Quetzali, that sort of thing, moving over. But then again, come to think of it, I don't know if that's actually any different than them just activating Antios. So maybe stunning that was the wrong choice and we should have stunned Antios instead. Because at least that forces them to spend their Cinder on Quetzali and gives us a time to potentially take that off the battlefield. Interesting. So I'm going to jump into the queue in just a few minutes. I'm going to give it a little bit of a rest and hopefully pop back so I can then come back with hopefully a different opponent. So I'll give it about five minutes, just hope that someone else pops in the queue, and then we'll join back in from there. Okay, we're back. It looks as though I've just had a quick check on Jester's stream. They've got a different opponent now. So we're going to jump back in with our big money Astra and see if we can come against someone who's uh, not going to just utterly smash us into the ground. <laughs> like I said, it's very likely that happens with Jester on a regular basis. We're... Two very different play styles with what this list is trying to do with what Jester's trying to do. We're trying to do something a little bit quirky, something a little bit bizarre, and see if, you know, if we can make something work with a, a very subpar list. Whereas Jester's trying to you know, work on their tournament list, because I believe they're entering the tournament this weekend. So very different, you know, very different theories there. Escape Patch and Ion Storm seems great for us. Ion Storm keeps us alive a little bit longer. Bring it's Ice and Ash. Interesting name, I've never heard of them. So, we'll grow some cinder here. I might even just move slightly further back and grow the cinder here. Just keep this as safe as possible. So, having escape hatch is really good for us here. It's kind of awkward that we've not been going second, because second would actually be great for us. Now, here we could pick this up and place another orb, but I actually feel like we're just as safe placing this because they, they didn't play a one drop. So there's very little chance that we lose one or both of these. So I think that's what... Actually, they can probably move in and take one of these. So I'm going to move in and take this. It's going to gain us two cinder, bank us three to next turn, guarantee us that six. Because there's a reasonable chance that they could just move forward and deploy onto it. And that would be pretty bad for us. 
Okay, so they've got their first deployment. It's going to be possibly up to a five drop if they use second LD. wind. So it's going to be something like crosshair maybe, or where are we going? Okay, so we've got the forward movement. And the answer is... Oh, Torian Guardian. Interesting. Okay. So we've got some things that do fairly well against Torian, namely things like Bulwark actually does well because it gets 25% additional accuracy. We've got Furia that does quite well. Sentinel does... Well, sorry, not Furia. Sentinel and Florio do quite well there. But I think here we're just going to play our switchback over here and just pick that orb up. And I think what we do is escape hatch to try and get down... Basically, we wanted to reduce the chances of getting something other than dome. We want our dome or our bulwark here. Thick it would do, but it's the worst option of the three. That's the best option, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not actually going to reduce any accuracy here. What I will do is just grow a cinder behind us. Because that gives us a potential of having a lot of cinder next turn. Again, so this is going much better. This is a much more sort of a fun start as well. Something a little bit unusual. This list really does make good use out of the uh, escape hatch as well, so this should be quite fun. That's a really nice looking uh, selection of colours there on their Zax. They've got Taria there. So what we're wanting to do here is whichever unit they play, uh, so that they keep further away from Torian, so whichever one doesn't have the buff, that's what we're going to try and switch back. So if it's Zax, we'll shoot Zax. If it's Taria, we'll shoot Taria. Whatever it is, we're going to try and avoid it. Uh, avoid you know, dealing with that debuff. If they keep leaving us, we're just going to play a Florio probably and then just start using us in the, to bombard things instead of playing out big units because we're going to be getting escape patch for free in a couple of turns. Makes things a little bit easier for us. They could have something like Rickety backfire here. If they play Rickety, we would absolutely eye on Storm, but as it stands here, there's not really much point. So here we've got access to 7 Cinder. So what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to play Florio at the back and I'm going to use... Oh, okay. Well, it's a shame that our opponent conceded there because I actually think we had a really interesting game ahead of us. So I was going to be using the Cinder, two of it to give switch back uh, Rapid Fire. So I was going to move hopefully over here and get two damage over... Sorry, six damage over onto Zax. And then I was going to be playing Florio out and trying to just sort of sit back at that point. Novian Bulwark has hit level one. People, we are making progress. Nearly at that icon. I can't remember who it was that went through and did uh, every single icon that they could find in the game. And to me, that's a great achievement. But I also would really love to get a unit to level 10 to start up unlocking those banner crests because there's some really nice banner crests out there. So we'll count that one as a win. I actually do think we were probably in a really good position. I think our opponent's start was too slow to sort of reliably finish us off from where we were. I don't think it was a, a foregone conclusion. There's definitely things that could have happened that you know left with us losing that game. But considering that we had, what was it, two, three, six drops, was it? What did we have? We had uh, switchback. The, oh, yeah, we had switchback, the um, defense dome. And then I think we were just at Astra on top of that. But then we would have been able to follow that up with Florio. So, yeah, I think we were in a really, really good spot there. I don't think there was much they could have done to sort of come back. But it definitely wasn't a foregone conclusion. You know, Moonbreaker's got a lot of variance, a lot of sort of... You know, interesting plays you can make so a better player even with worse units can absolutely beat a better player so well worth sort of having a look at and considering you know what your options are from that point I definitely don't think our opponent was out of luck but it's just the way things go sometimes so from now I'm gonna come come back when we've got a game and hopefully we'll have a bunch of playing so have a bunch have a chance of playing a bunch more six drops okay we're back in the game We'll see what our uh, what our fates have sent us today. Hey, we've got the same Zax opponent. Okay, so hopefully this time they don't concede as early, because that was a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. I think here, I quite like the look of Ion Storm and Cinder Infusion. So, Cinder Infusion we can make reasonable use of if we're careful. So it's just a case about... You know, basically, we just need to get a unit out on turn 3, which is when it first comes to be activated. So, playing around with these Cinder Orbs is quite important here. What I want to do really is leave myself an option where I can either place the next cinder orb this side or this side, depending on where they move. So, for instance, if, if they move over here in this general direction, I probably want to place a cinder orb over here to make it harder for them to hit. But looking at where they are now, 
over here is going to be really hard for them to hit. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to pick up our little cinder ball so that we've again got three that we're carrying over and grow another one. Again, I think like protecting it is a better option, but this is a safer option. I think this is just... if I Because this way we're guaranteed six in the next turn. If we left that out and somehow they managed to kill our big one, you know, I don't really know if that's going to be what we wanted to do. Ooh, what's this going to be? So they've got five cinder as well, so this could be a big drop. This could be like a Florio or a... I think Crosshair. They're going Florio straight away. Okay, so the thing with Florio is that Florio is very cinder intensive. It takes a lot to make Florio work. So what I'm going to be doing is trying to find a way of just dealing with that as quick as possible in a way that doesn't cost us cinder. So the answer is probably just going to be switch back and Astra together. Uh, because if we pop over here, we can't get line of sight quite yet. But we can also pop this on here and get ourselves an extra cinder next turn. And as is now tradition in this list, we're going to grow another cinder here. There's no sense in using our Ion Storm here, because it doesn't really do anything. It just reduces Zax's accuracy. And if they're willing to invest into Florio every turn, they can't even activate it this turn. So it's going to fall a little bit short. And we might even get you know, a small chance of even killing it before it even gets onto the battlefield. So that's absolutely what we're going to look to do. We're going to probably try and see if there's something we could into the breach over here. Maybe like a, a crosshair could do good, actually. I think that's going to be my game plan, but it depends on how much cinder we've got. I think it's probably better to just... So what if, we, if we use two here, we've still got six left. So I think it's probably better just to use two and play a six drop. But we're going to just make sure that we take no risks here. Switch it up and take as much damage off of this as possible. There we go. So because we only have six drops in the list, we don't need to be too aggressive with our positioning. We can just move back. That's, uh, well, five and six drops. And then, honestly, I think if we place the bulwark out... I don't like the bulwark very much, but it's a good unit for this sort of point in time and we're spread out as much as possible so that Florio can't hit us either. So again we're saving our uh, we're saving our Iron Storm until it's necessary. So here they can't kill Switchback without a crit. They can't do much to Bulwark without you know, having to go down whatever bizarre routes they're trying to. Okay so they're just going to try and kill this over two turns. That's fine. What Cinder do we have? We didn't have a spare Cinder this turn which is interesting. If this is a Scattervine, that would be good, or a Plink. Orbital? If it's Orbital, we just... Oh, Disruptor. Sure, so that's just reducing accuracy over onto Florio. I mean, we're going to use the Bulwark to kill Florio in this case. With 5 Cinder, there's no point in trying to do anything other than just switch back this and run away. We're, they're going to be able to kill it, but that's not what we're going for here. We're going for... You deal damage and play it safe, and then probably just deploy onto their face. Ooh, they got second wind, so four more cinder for them. So maybe they can get a good option of reducing the accuracy here. Nectarvine, okay. Yeah, so there is a... Is this a stun? Okay, no stun. So we've got six again. Doesn't really help our switch back is the problem. So we can get... A line of sight over there that's medium at best. So let's just try and go for this first. Plonk this right in the centre and try and get some damage off over here. Okay, we did get that, which is always nice. We've got a low accuracy shot in that direction, but don't know if it's even worth taking so what I might do is just try and take the long shot from here to make Zax deal with it so it's 50-50 we did get it that's nice and what's our follow up going to be so we've got six cinder but we want to play something that puts pressure onto the board so I actually think we're going to bring this over here and I think we're probably actually just going to play crosshair out play crosshair again fairly aggressively make them sort of come for it and then we're just going to grow another cinder back here. Okay, and our opponent sort of uh, has called it a day at that point as well. Again, they only had Zax that can deal any damage. It wasn't a... Uh, you know, there was only the 
neck divine on the battlefield for that for them otherwise so they could have killed our switchback but they probably couldn't have uh, you know, dealt with the damage coming and then anything they play from then on is going to be hit by a crit from crosshair every single turn so we can just use that leverage that extra damage coming through excellent so because we've had a, a couple of hiccups in this and a couple of sort of short finishes i'm going to jump in for one more game and see what we can uh, you know, pop out in here again this is a really slow list so astra is the only viable option we've actually been able to play a big unit on turn three every turn while still banking cinder for future turns and i think that's actually worked really nicely i should probably sit and do the maths about whether to leave my cinder or play another one but to me having one cinder or with three cinder it's just scary. Okay, this is probably going to be Jester this time. And we're just going to uh, cry to ourselves. And I think this is a a reasonable way of finishing things off. Just the way things should be. Us losing to an aggressive list. So I'm going to take Vortex and Orbital. The reason for it is I think it actually gives us... Yeah, it is Jester. So Vortex can pull things away from us. Which is what we're probably going to have to do. And Orbital is going to be able to just zone things off slightly. So here we're just going to... Grow a cinder back here. Play it safe. The reason being is that if they move this way, we're going to do the same thing. Grow the next cinder this way. Uh, basically, I'm still thinking of alternating cinder. We could also just move back and do it, but again, them being able to deploy onto the cinder is pretty terrifying. So this turn, what we're going to do is we are going to vortex anything backwards that we can. So this is probably Maximus. I'd be surprised if not, to be honest. And it is... I don't think the placement here matters as much as Jester probably thinks it does, because we're not playing any unit that can actually land on the battlefield this next turn. <laughs> Literally none. Yeah, so there's their Maximus. Okay, so what's their deployment radius going to be? That's the thing. That's another thing I wish I could see, is just their... how easy it is to deploy from there. So Maximus can absolutely get line of sight onto this. So we're going to want to be taking that... Growing another cinder somewhere fairly safe. So like here seems good to me. And then honestly, I think I'm actually going to try and just vortex back in this direction a little bit. Make it harder for them to bring towards us. So it doesn't move Zax much, which is a shame. But I don't think Zax can move far enough to deploy onto this. Maybe they can. I mean, I haven't quite got the, uh, the judgment here to figure that out. But this is what the plan was, to make Maximus' line of sight as hard as possible. I can't believe it yet, they did get the one hit there. Okay, so they can deploy onto it. So that's going to take our six. Oh no, they can't, they're just short. Okay, we're a genius. So the next plan is, depending on what they play, we might be able to just stick an orbital in one direction, or the other over here, or over here, and just play it super safe from there. What they could also do with Force Cinder is actually, and this is something I would genuinely consider doing in this matchup, is they could gravity disc themselves forwards, deploy onto the cinder and take it, and then follow up. And it seems really inefficient, especially given that they're going to be trying to kill us, but I actually think it could work. Like, they're only really spending one cinder to deny us two cinder. So at that point, I think that's reasonable. I think Jester might even see the line, but maybe not because they're quite an aggressive player. They like to sort of, you know, take games down as quickly as possible. But what I quite like to do in these situations is think, what could I do other than this, that could potentially have a, a different effect in future games. Okay, so Antios, so that's going to be Talali coming down here. Yep, absolutely. So what we need to do here is figure out a way to protect ourselves while also putting damage onto our opponents probably next turn. So we can't avoid much, so we're just going to have to move backwards in this direction. Is there a way we can... no, not really. So we can move backwards to here. Uh, it doesn't matter too much about that because we need to just place something big down. Um, probably has to be... You know what could be good here? It's a weird situation, but I actually think we could be in an Age of Sentinel situation here. Because if we just place this here, we've got a big cone of where we can get to. We can grow another Cinder Orb just back here for next turn. They can obviously like come and, come and get this, but that's absolutely something that we're willing to go through. I think what we're going to do is move to about... Okay, how far is Tali's activation? 
So I think if we place this about here, this is probably hardest for them. So they're going to have to move Antios somewhere around here, but this makes it hard for them to play Talali without getting Talali in a position that we can actually hit with their orbital. So yeah, so they're, they're just going to take it. This is fine. This is not really how we want the game to go. They're going to go for our Cinderall, which is fine. Again, so I've said this in previous videos. In games like this, I am more happy that they're taking our Cinder Orb than I am that they're shooting our Captain. So if that's what they do, that is absolutely fine. Yeah, this should all really be going for our Captain. It doesn't make sense to do it any other way. We do have Vortex next turn, so it can just pull things slightly further away or slightly into Flechette range if we need to. So this is going to be a uh, just a hit for four here, yeah. Interesting, so we can't actually move on to that. We don't have a small enough base. We can deploy Crosshair onto it though, so it's not too bad. And we are going to have to do almost exactly that. I mean, we're pretty much dead here. Okay, that miss is nice. They're taking three onto their captain, but that doesn't really matter. So, we can place Crosshair down here. We can activate this for three. Honestly, being able to jump over walls is not going to be enough here, I don't think, but we can try. Hmm. I'm not sure. This is actually a more interesting spot than I thought it would be, to be honest. Yeah, that's fine. We'll deal three there. So we could potentially also just like drag these together, which would work, which doesn't cost any cinder, which then gives us eight. And eight would allow us to haste out something. But nothing... It's quite what we want. I guess Hasting Crosshair might even just be our best option here. So let's move over here. I'm actually going to pull these back together. So this might not be a good position for us eventually, but I think we should be able to hop back over the wall if it comes to it. Okay, so we're going to into the breach. Crosshair. In fact, no, we don't want Crosshair. No, we do, because we can only afford to play across it. That's what. Yeah, we weren't, didn't have as much cinder as I thought. So we'll shoot here. We'll take this shot here. We've refreshed that movement, so the question is, what do we do from here? And honestly, I think we just leapfrog away in this direction for now. Maybe even just place crosshair here to reduce a bit of accuracy. And see what happens. So, this isn't good. I'm not feeling great about this. We have obviously placed ourselves in range of some things, but we moved out of range of Antios. Kind of running a circle around them, but not in a an impactful enough way. But I actually really enjoy games like this because it means that, yeah, we have to figure out how to play differently. Okay, this is a good gravity disc here. Oh, maybe this little lip's keeping us safe. I don't think it will, but maybe. So, I'm always kind of like okay with losing games like this because it does just teach you quite a lot. There's not much that we can do about this. We're always going to lose to any of Jester's lists with a list like this, because not only is Jester a good player, if you don't know already, Jester streams most days. And as I can say, you can see level 100 here. That's far more than we've got to offer. Yep, so that's put us down to... Is it three now? Yeah, down to three. So between these two, we should quite easily be losing it. Uh, I would probably be releasing Ozus onto Zax. Yeah, there we go, for the 90%. Perfect. So that was a good finish by... Uh, by Jester there. I think we were close. Maybe using a Sentinel could have just been something else. But again, we needed another 5 drops. It could have been a Furia, I guess. Furia might have been more useful. And that's something I'll consider for next time. All in all, we didn't function too badly. So the only list we lost to was genuinely one of the best lists in the entire game. We managed to play big things fairly consistently. We protected our Cinder Orbs well. We didn't really get many stolen. And all in all, I had a lot of fun. So, if you guys want to let me know if you have any success with a list like this. It's as expensive as it as it can get. Feel free to change the units around. You know, like so. What did we use today? That was a uh, we'd say was MVP. In fact, you know who we haven't used much of recently. Let's put them back on the uh, on the old top spot. We could go recoil and DB. So these are the two guys from Switchback. So we'll pop our Switchback mastery one on. These are the two thugs from the Exterior story, which I can't believe I didn't know that, but that's awesome. 
Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. One of the things to look forward to is as soon as we get the new patch notes, the first time I'm able to record a video and get it uploaded, I absolutely will do. And hopefully we'll, if it comes before the weekend, we'll be able to get a stream up for quite a bit of time over the weekend and have a bit of fun doing that as well. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like and comment the video. And most importantly, have a good day.